Hi, this is Leslie Langnaw at Design World Magazine, and I'm here at the Rapid Show. I'm here now with Pat Carey, Senior Vice President of, of Stratasys. And this morning, you guys introduced a very interesting concept, kind of a 3D printing system, where it's a number of 3D printing engines connected together, grouped together. How did that idea all come about? Our, so we have what we call demonstrators, which are like yeah. concept cars, right? Okay. So we've so far introduced three, the infinite build demonstrator, right. the robotic composite demonstrator, and today the continuous build demonstrator, okay. looking at three challenges of 3D printing. One is size of parts. Uh -huh. So infinite build theoretically can print infinitely, right. if you printing outside, I guess. Um, robotic composite is really looking at printing on eight axes not okay. just one axis, printing on eight axes with composites. And this is really looking at printing continuously. So today, 3D printing is a standalone manual process. We go to an oven, we put something in, we take it out. This is really both a workflow, connected workflow, and automation of the process. So those are some of the challenges we're looking at, we're looking at addressing, mm -hmm. and then eventually putting those technologies into products. Now one of the things I noticed this morning was this um, system, it seems to be space efficient in, on a plant floor and you don't really need operators to man the system. Is yes, that that's correct? the whole idea. Okay. The whole idea is if we're going to grow into manufacturing and to print hundreds or thousands of parts, I can't have it the current way where somebody has to manually start the job, manually take the job out, mm -hmm. manually finish the job. That won't scale up to hundreds, thousands, ten thousands of parts. So the more we can automate things, the more parts we can produce. And that goes to the next question regarding connectivity. There seems to be a trend in additive to connect multiple machines together. Correct, so if we go back to the composite, robotic composite demonstrator, that was really built on top of Siemens PLM. So the PLM is an, a factory operating system. So to prove that we could take jobs from the PLM, we could take images from the PLM and actually print it. So this is the next step of connectivity. So the, the continuous build is cloud connected. Mm -hmm. So we can sub submit jobs anywhere in the world to this. We can check jobs anywhere in the world to this. And these printers are all connected. So we actually have multiple of these around the world that are talking to each other. So if we look at a factory today, it's a factory is data driven. It's got an operating system to it. Yeah, it's got an operating system to it. And we have to plug into that. Factories are basically digital data environments, right? Where 3D printing, we've digitized 3D printing, uh -huh. but on a standalone basis, so it doesn't make sense if you think about it. So we've digitized manufacturing, now we have to plug into that connected environment. And that's what this is really about. So plugging in, automation, built on top of PLM, if you look at what we've been doing. Last two demonstrators are really interesting. So now what do you foresee as the benefits and maybe even the challenges of some of that connectivity? Well, the, the benefits are now we can join the workflow. Right, the, the challenges are when you go to a factory, that's already all been done. We can't just show up, at work, show up at a factory and say, hey, we're from 3D printing, stop the presses, right? No, they're, they're building stuff. So we, have to, we really have to plug into those and they're standards based, they're established, there's big vendors controlling all of that. So if you look at a couple of our partnerships, like the one with Siemens, we're saying we recognize those challenges, we recognize this, we need to be part of an ecosystem that runs factories, that runs additive manufacturing. So a lot of people here are talking about manufacturing, but they're not doing manufacturing. They're doing printing in a standalone. We're really, really embracing the challenge of additive manufacturing as part of a, a factory that already exists. So bringing additive into a factory that exists is the way it's going to grow. It's not going to grow as a standalone thing. Okay. Do you want to address a little bit about the partnership that you guys announced this morning with Desktop Metal? Sure. So what was the drive behind that? So since the beginning of Desktop Metal, we've been a, a partner. We're an, an original investor. Our founder's on their board, so we've always had it. We've, so we've had a partnership since the beginning. So today we announce an extension of that, and that is we have the premier channel in 3D printing in North America here. So we have the top partners, the most mature channel. We said to Desktop Metal, we, we, we'll allow our partners to sell Desktop Metal. So they don't have to go create a new channel. Um, there's a lot of similarities between our FDM technology yeah. and what Desktop Metal announced today. It's very similar in the way it works. It's office friendly. You don't need special suits and outfits and things like that to make it work. So we're hearing from our customers and our partners a lot of synergy. We have a partnership, so said, let's go to the next level. Do you foresee a time when additive systems will actually be able to 
make hundreds of thousands of parts, not just different parts, but maybe even the same part? Sure. Uh, we have to make sure we understand there's a value to making hundreds of thousands of the same part. There's probably a manufacturing process that can do it today that doesn't take advantage of, of additive. But you could make a hundred thousand of almost the same part, each one slightly customized. That would take advantage of additive. But I see that as part of what we showed today, continuous build. So starting to see this is possible. We can repeat a process. We can make the parts look the same, be the same, or as close to the grand as we could put just somebody's name on it, for example, or a Mickey Mouse or something, right? Uh, so yes, we're starting to see that possibility happen. Is there a benefit to eliminating some of the traditional manufacturing processes and replacing them with a more additive process? I view it as more putting them together than, than a replacement. So injection molding is not going to go away, CNC is not going to go away, but those technologies have covered broad swaths of manufacturing because there was nothing else. So I think they will narrow a little bit so if you look at injection molding, low volume injection molding is very expensive. So we can, you know, continuous build, you saw an injection molder with us today. So they're able to satisfy their customer needs better and cheaper. And then when that customer says, I need 100,000 of these, they're a happier customer, et cetera, et cetera. So I, so I think CNC will narrow, injection, the lot of technology will narrow. They'll get more mature in what they're doing. And then we'll fit in between. That's what I believe will really happen. I don't, you know, a lot of people say you're going to throw out I don't think we're going to throw out anything in manufacturing. We're going to add to it. Yeah, it's more of a recognition that those things were force fit into operations that maybe now can be better handled yeah, with no, additive. There was no option. There was no other option. So they just had to do it one way or another, right. right? Right. So for engineers who want to find more about the products that you introduced today and some of the things, where would they go to find more information? Stratasys.com. Okay. And that is what's going on with Stratasys at the Rapid Show here in Pittsburgh.